Hi, welcome to this QuickBooks video. We've got a series of videos that we're doing here that uh, correspond to a series of blog posts. And this is all about using QuickBooks in uh, agriculture. So you know that there are those industry-specific versions of QuickBooks, and we've got QuickBooks for construct uh, contractors, uh, QuickBooks for retail, QuickBooks for nonprofits, and so forth. But there's no QuickBooks for agriculture. But some of those features can be used uh, across boundaries of different invoice, uh, different industries. Sorry. So we're going to look at some of those, and we're going to see how maybe we could use those for ag. Now the terminology may be a little different, maybe it doesn't quite match, but the feature will work to give us some information that's going to be valuable for someone in, with uh, an agriculture enterprise. Now the first thing that uh, we're going to look at is a uh, fixed uh, asset item list. So people in an uh, agriculture type uh, organization are usually going to have lots of equipment that they want to track. Those would be fixed assets, so tractors, uh, different kinds of implements, and so forth. And we want to keep track of those. We want to have information on those, especially uh, when we get to the early part of the year and we get that property tax statement from the county assessor each year, and, and he wants to know what equipment we have, uh, in our possession, when did we first purchase that, how much did we purchase it for, and so forth. So we're going to look at that. Now the fixed asset item list is not something that's very well known in QuickBooks. It's not really used all that much. So let's look and see how we could use that in an ag setting. That list is available to me right here off of the lists pull down menu. So lists and fixed asset item list right here. If I click on that, in this sample file that I have, we already have a, a pretty full list of, of uh, different things that we would consider fixed assets, so permanent long-term assets that we own. You can see several here. We've got pistachio trees. We've got equipment, cultivators, um, planter, and so forth. We've got a couple of tractors down here. If I were to pull one of these up, there we go. This is the window with uh, the information for that uh, particular piece of equipment. Now, there are a lot of fields here that may look a little daunting to you. Don't worry about that. Just use the fields that, that you want. Just use those fields that will keep a record for you of those things that you want to keep a record of. So, actually, let me choose... Let me choose the other tractor. And the reason I switched over is I have a little more information on this one, including a serial number. That's a good example of something that I want, would want to keep track of. And so rather than have that buried in a manila folder on a piece of paper in a file cabinet that three years later I'm unsure about you know, exactly where that is, I can have it right here in my uh, QuickBooks. So I've got the name of the piece of equipment. I've got when I bought it, how much I bought it for, who I bought it from that sort of information I have in here I can track that very easily and the serial number as I mentioned. The other thing that I want to mention because this goes to that property tax statement that that I mentioned earlier I have an APN number. In some cases an agricultural company will have more than one location and they may have equipment at both of those locations and in some cases they'll get one of those 571F, the property tax statement sent out by the county assessor, they'll get one for each location. They'll each have a different APN number, and so here is where I have that record that this piece of equipment goes with that particular APN. Now, uh, creating something like this is very simple. Let me close that uh, window. If I right-click my mouse anywhere on this list, little pop-up menu, I select new, and there is the blank window. Just fill in the information that I want. I, there'll, there'll have to be a name of the asset. Other than that, it's up to me what I want to keep track of, what I want to record in QuickBooks. Now when I want to have access to this information, if I have a lot of pieces of equipment here and I needed a list printed out of QuickBooks to help me with the property tax statement, this isn't it. I mean, I don't want to go to each one of these assets and look up information. But I can go to Reports, 
and the list section of reports, there is a fixed asset listing right here. I click on that and here's the list of all the fixed assets that we have recorded. This may not be the information that I need and by that I mean you know, I probably don't care about the account. Um, maybe I don't care about the purchase description. It's the same as the name. Purchase date I might like. I don't want this. I can get rid of all of those things. See, the thing that's missing here, though, is that location that I mentioned to you. But I can add that. So I can add columns to this report by going to Customize Report. And right here is a list of the columns that are included. And if I kind of scroll down this list, I will find location. And I'm at the bottom, so I must have passed it already. I'm glad you're patient. I'm not sure where it is. Location of fixed. Oh, there we go. I just didn't go far enough. Okay. So I'll put my check mark in there. And uh, now here's the one that we were looking at earlier that's got that APN number for location. So there were, because of um, in some of these simpler things, while we're going to, this is going to be one blog post all on itself, and we're going to go into attached documents. I wanted to include both of those in one video. So they're kind of related. At least I'm going to show you how we can relate them. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into uh, fixed, uh, or I'm sorry, into um, attached documents and show you how that might help not only in general but in a an agricultural setting. I'm going to keep this uh, pretty short for attached documents. I don't want this to be a uh, video about the entire feature and all the different ways that that you can use it. I'm really focusing here on what might be valuable in that feature particularly to the ag industry. So that's what we're looking at. The the attached documents feature in QuickBooks is another one of those things a lot of people don't know is there. So just briefly to show you what it is, let's, uh, let's go to my vendor center here in the sample file. And if you look at this screen, you may have wondered before what this little paperclip icon is here and what this little column here in my vendor list that says attach. Well, the, the fact that there's a paper clip in this column, that means there's a document attached to this vendor's name, Foster's Fuels, okay? I have something in there uh, attached to that vendor name. And I can do that with customers and employees and so forth. I can also attach documents to transactions. Actually, let me pull that back up again. But I think I've got one under Foster's Fuels. This check right here. So I'm going to look at this check to Foster's Fuels. And sure enough, I have a document, perhaps the bill that the vendor sent me that uh, I paid with this check, something like that. So I can attach documents to all the different kinds of uh, transactions in QuickBooks, invoices, checks, bills, and so forth. Well, I can tell that there's a document attached to this because I have that little one. If I had two or three documents, I would see a two or a three here, depending on on how many documents I had. Clicking on this icon, uh, this shows me here is a PDF copy of what I have attached to that particular check. This is, I would use this same procedure in order to attach a document. I could attach a second document here. And you can see from these icons, I could choose computer, which would let me navigate to a location on my computer and pull that document into the uh, attached document center. I could scan it. So as I'm creating the bill or the check, I can scan the document right in at the same time and attach that. Or I can go to the Doc Center, which looks much like this, where I can scan a lot of documents in to the system at once. And then I can go to the various lists and transactions in QuickBooks where I want to attach those items. So how does that, how is that ag specific? What would I do in an ag business that, that would make that attached document um, feature solve a problem for me. One thing I get asked a lot in the ag industry is, is there any way that QuickBooks will keep track of the repair costs on certain pieces of equipment? So a decision can be made at some point that you know, a piece of equipment is just costing too much to maintain anymore. And there isn't. You know, so there really is not a good solution for that in QuickBooks. But with attached documents, there is. 
I'm going to go back to that fixed item list that we were looking at earlier and you can attach documents to fixed assets uh, items. You can see right here that I've got one because you, there's that little paper clip icon. I see sometimes people keep track of things like this like a repair uh, maintenance log or something like that in Excel. That's fine. I can do that. But the added benefit with QuickBooks is I can attach it to that specific item rather than looking in another folder and looking up which piece of equipment for which uh, Excel worksheet. If I double click on my little paper clip here, there's my list of attachments for that item. There's one attachment and it's an Excel worksheet. So they don't have to be PDF files. They could be, it could be a Word document. It could be an Excel document. I can open this from here by double clicking on that. Excel opens. There you go. I know this is real simple. I've only done it for the purpose of demonstration here. I've just got one repair listed. But I can keep track of my repairs in this Excel worksheet. And that's another program. I'm working in Excel, sure. But the benefit is that I can have it attached to the particular item so it's accessible right from here anytime I want to add something or I want to view that list. And of course I could have one of those then for each of the items on my fixed asset list. So I hope we've got a couple of ideas there that will help you as far as small little individual problems that the ag industry has, how QuickBooks might address those. And in future weeks we're going to be picking up on some other items like tracking crop costs, being able to tell if a particular crop or a particular field is profitable and uh, those kinds of things. So hope you stick with us and thanks for watching the video.